Good evening. Tonight is, uh, well, today is day 103. And um, today we're going to be reading um, 1 Samuel 22 through 24 and Luke chapter 12, verse 1 through 31. Um, a little bit about today. Uh, I told you I was running for city council. Today was my first day that I actually went uh, to a neighborhood association meeting. It was worse than I, <laughs> I was very nervous and uh, it was way worse than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I gotta get a whole lot better. Kinda glad I got this out the way. Next week I was supposed to be on the radio. Um, just gotta make sure I'm a lot better. And uh, hopefully I do better, but um, today it was um, it was pretty, uh, <laughs> it was different. Normally I do pretty good in, uh, in, 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 I guess, speaking engagements, but you know, with this being uh, my first time really trying to get people to actually vote for me. A lot of times when I speak, it really doesn't matter whether they like me or not, I just speak my piece and uh, move on. But now that you're trying to get people to like you, so that you can get their vote, or are you trying to actually, I don't know, give them a reason not to vote for the guy that they always know. Turns out, this the, my opponent, or the current guy at city council, he goes to this meeting all the time. Talks to the lady of the association all the time. The wife comes. She lucky for me, it was only three people there. <laughs> it was four. Uh, so, didn't make that big a fool out of myself. And uh, he didn't happen to come to that meeting. So that was great. And, you know, I learned a lot. Uh, I just need to do it more. I'm sure in about three or four months, I'll be a whole lot better. Uh, I'm also a lot better one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, I gotta get a level a lot better. So it's good that I had this humbling experience. It wasn't a total disaster. Just that um, I told my wife to call and uh, she she was calling and I'm thinking people are gonna tell me, okay, yeah, come in a couple of weeks. And she got a lady on the phone and just so happened they're meeting today. And she was like, can you go? So I had like a two hours notice. Didn't know what I was gonna say, didn't have any information. Uh, what I did talk about, they weren't really interested in. And uh, the lady met me in the parking lot and the meeting started at 6.30. So from six o'clock to 6.30, she would just hit me, pepper, peppering me with question after question after question. And just kind of threw me all off guard, so I wasn't ready. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to be ready, you know. So, and uh, see what I gotta do. Plus, you know, the whole idea of being on city council, you know, I'm not gonna say it frightens me, but it's not a uh, a small thing, you know. So just gotta make sure I, it it is an important office in the city, and uh, just gotta do a good job. So. Nothing else got to run a good race. Got to do a whole lot better than what I did tonight. So that was my day. Uh, oh, by the way, you can see my website at williamgreencitycouncil.org. Check it out. Got a little information. One thing I am good at is IT because that's what I do. So do have a website, mobile app. Should be ready in about a week. And that's called William Green City Council. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 22. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam. Adul and when his brethren and his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. And David went thence to Mizpah and Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God would do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was with in the hole. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hole, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then, God, then David departed and came into the forest of Herat. When Saul heard that David was discovered, and the men that were with him now saw a bowl and Gibeah under a tree and Ramah having his spear in his hand and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, 
where the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands, captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me and there is none that showeth me that my son had made a league with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you that is sorry for me or showeth unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then as a Doeg, the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub. And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech, the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came all of him to the king. And Saul said, Here now, thy son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all the servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at the bidding, at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all his this less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die. Ahimelech thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footman that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. And the king said to Deoch, Turn thou and fall upon the priests. And Deoch the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priest and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did where he landed ephod. And Nob, the city of the priest, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Eotah, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Deoch, Doach, Egg, the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasions the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Chapter 23 Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kiliah, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines, and save Keilah. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah, how much more than if we come to Keilah against the armies of Philistines. Then David inquired of the Lord yet again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down, to Keilah, for I would deliver the Philistines into thy hand. So David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved inhabitants of Keilah. And it came to pass when Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Keilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah, and Saul said, God hath delivered him into mine hand, for he is shut in by entering to the town that hath gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar, the priest, bring hither the ephod. Then said David, O Lord, God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? 
O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbade, forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness and strongholds, and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father should not find thee, and thou should be king of Israel, and I should be next unto thee, and that also Saul my father know it. And they too made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Ziphites to Saul to give you a saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the wood in the hill of Hachilah? which is on the south of Jeshimon. Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down, and our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hands. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, prepare yet, and know, and see his place where his hunt is. And who hath seen him there, for it is told me that he dealeth very seldomly. See therefore and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself and come ye again to me with the certainty and I will go with you and it should come to pass if ye be in the hand that I will search him out th throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul but David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon and in the plain on the south of Jishimah. Saul also and his men went to seek him, and they told David, Wherefore he came down into a rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul, for Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. But there came a messenger to Saul, saying, Haste thee and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called the place Selahamakalak. And David went up from thence and dwelt in strongholds at Engedi. In Jedi. Chapter 24. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of in Jedi. And Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats. By the way, there was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it should seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried out to Saul, saying, My lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stopped, stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee, and I said, I would not put forth my hand 
against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yeah, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe, and kill thee not. Know thou, and see, that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but my hand should not be upon thee. As said, as said the proverb of the ancients, ancients, wickedness proceeded from the wicked, but mine hand should not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After dead dog, after a flea. The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. And it came to pass, when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed me, showed this day, how that thou hast dealt well with me. For as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now, behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord that thou would not cut off my seed after me, and that thou would not destroy my name out of thy father's house. And David swore unto Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men got them up unto the hold. Luke chapter 12, verse 1 through 31. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven, leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that should not be revealed, neither hid that should not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness should be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets should be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I said unto you, my, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye should fear. Fear him which after he killeth hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, Whosoever should confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denied me before men should be denied before the angels of God. Also, whosoever speak a word against the Son of Man, it should be forget, forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it should not be forgiven. And when they bring you into the synagogue and into magistrate and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye should answer, or what ye should say. For the Holy Ghost should teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of the covetous, covetousness, for man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will put down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul should be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, 
what you should eat, neither for the body what you should put on. The life is more than meat, the body is more than raven. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with talking thought taking thought can add to his statue one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lily, lilies, how they grow. They told not, they spend not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubtful of mine. For all these things do to the nations of the world seek after. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things should be added to you.